I'd like to do the kata this time while explaining some of the key points. While learning the kata, it's important to understand where, et where each technique starts and where each technique stops. Think of it as a dot matrix. Each technique has a series of dots that you need to connect. And once you understand where those dots are, you can then move forward and start to work on your timing, your rhythm, and your speed, power. But until you understand where those are, trying to use speed, power, rhythm, uh, can just complicate the process of learning. I come to attention in Musubidashi. I bow. My left foot opens into Yoidachi. I come into Hirate Kamai, open hand guard. Look, pivot turn, set, lock and grab, punch. Look, pivot turn, set at the body line. Lock and grab, punch. Look to the front, pivot turn slide, set. Block, grab, punch. Now we'll pick up a 45 degree angle. Block, grab, pinch the knees, kick. Step through, turn to the other side, 45 degrees. Set on the body line, block, grab, pinch the knees, kick with the edge of the foot. Facing to the front, set, cut the foot, Drive forward into a square stance or shikobachi. Elbow, drop, backhand strike. Turn to sanshin kamai. Slide, set, lock and pull, strike. Step through and adjust. Set, lock and pull, double palm strike. Step and adjust. Set, lock and pull, double palm strike for the third time. Step through and adjust, block, chop, back fist. Look, pivot, turn, come I take. Block, front, kick, slide, set, block, one knuckle punch. Cover the right hand on top of left. Back into your ski, and ray. Kinshiwa has four stances in it, three of which are learned in Sanshin Kata. The first is the informal attention stance, or Musubidachi. The second is Yoidachi. Knees are pinched inward, feet are straight, body pulls down. Of course, Sanshin Dachi is the third, or the hourglass stance. I have heel toe alignment in my feet. My front foot is angled at 30 degrees. My back foot is straight. In the final stance is a square stance, or shikodachi. This is a lower stance designed for strength. My front foot is straight ahead. My back foot turned 90 degrees. Knees are bent, weight is down, hips are to the front, and we do an elbow strike out of this position. These are the four stances in Kinshiwa Kata. Let's talk about blocking for a minute. Kinshiwa Kata has three blocks. Under close examination, you'll see that they're slightly different. However, when just viewing the Kata, you may say, oh, those are all the same. The first is called an open hand circle block. I'll demonstrate it. This is a very common block in Wichiru Karate. One hand drops to the lower part of the body at the edge we call it the body line. The opposite hand cuts to the center as if to guide an imaginary attack. I then cut across, up the side of my body, across the eye line, down into San Shin, and then the opposite hand returns to the starting point. One, two, three. If I were gonna strike, one, two, this hand is pretending to grab, it's called Nagiru, and then punch. Kamaite. Set, block, set, block, or set, block, strike. The next block is called wa-uke, and it's the first part of the, of the block we just did combined with a double palm strike at the end. This block is done over the forward foot. So since my right foot is in the front, I drop my right arm, 
block, both arms pull back, one to the waist, one to the chest. I strike out and then pull my elbows in slightly. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. The final block is a pressing block, which is done at the end of the kata. Like the other two, it's circular in nature, but rather than just coming around, it reaches out in front slightly and presses down. From the side, you'll see that it blocks and then finishes with a downward motion. These are often very subtle, but the nature of this block is slightly different. These are the three blocks you'll see throughout Kinshiwakata. Kinshiwa has a number of different strikes. The first strike you'll see is a straight punch, or Seiken Zuki. We do three at the very beginning of the kappa. They're done off of the rear leg. So when my right foot's in the rear position, I would punch off that side with my right arm. Okay. The next technique you'll see in the kata for upper body strikes is an elbow strike. This is a sideways elbow strike done with the edge of the arm or the point, depending on how it's applied. It's a very powerful strike. And right after this strike, we do a backhand strike, which is called uriken, here. It can be done with the face of the hand or the knuckles. One, set, two. Next, we have the boshikenzuki, and these are done after the wauke blocks. It's a, it's a strike done with the palm and the knuckle, and this is very unique to Ichidu. It comes out and then back. This is a traditional strike. Most people don't use this because it takes a tremendous amount of conditioning to prepare the hands to actually strike with full power. Nonetheless, it's done by blocking and then striking out and returning. Next in the kata, you'll see a shuto or knife hand strike. This is done in the kata over the forward foot Starts up at approximately 90 degrees and comes out and strikes with this part of the hand. Imagine this quarter of the hand being used. And then lastly, we have a one knuckle punch, which is called a shogun. I curl my fingers down, place my thumb across, drop my finger, and I hit with this one knuckle. This is also a technique which is uh, unique to which you uh, karate block strike. This would be used to vital areas of the body. Okay, uh, it is a strike that takes some time to strengthen and prepare. But it, as you can imagine, being very pointy, it can be very uh, effective when striking sensitive parts of the body. These are the strikes in kichiwakata. Let's talk about kicks. Kinchiwa Kata has two different types of kicks, and these are the two kicks that are traditionally in the style of Wichu Karate. They're not fancy, they're very effective though, and they're very practical. The first is called a front snap kick, or in Japanese, shoengiri, which means kick to the front. It's a very generic term. It's done at approximately waist height. We lift the knee up, parallel with the floor, the lower part of the leg, is perpendicular, it then snaps out and back and then returns back to the floor. It's typically done in this kata off of the forward leg and it's preceded by a block. Okay. The second kick, which is done twice in the kata, is called soktogeri, which means sword foot kick. And this is essentially a kick that's done at an angle using the blade of the foot. Um, it's not a side thrust kick, although that's how most people interpret it as, or a side snap kick. Uh, my knee comes up, okay, to the front of my body to protect the groin area, and then my knee aims where it's kicking, 
I pull the feet up to expose the blade or the sock toe. I then kick out and snap it back. This kick may appear to be very uh, weak or gentle. It's not the case at all. When you kick with the blade of the foot, it's bone that you're striking with and the contact surface is very thin. Or to put that in another way, it's very sharp. So when you strike the lower part of the body with the sock toe, it feels like you're being hit with a thin iron rod. It's very effective. These are the two kicks that you'll see in Kanshiwa Kata. The front snap kick and the side snap kick. The final note I'd like to make on Kanshiwa Kata is about Kiai. Kiai is a vocal expression. It's a shout the one makes. It's the harmony of your mental focus and your physical strength. Typically in Okinawan Karate, there are very few kiai, and when they're done, they're sometimes done before the technique, however, they're sometimes done on the technique. Um, in this kata, there are two kiai. The way I present the concept of kiai is to focus the center of the body as if receiving a blow, okay, and express a sound in a way where you're trying to build up courage for a task. So uh, when teaching, I present kiai as the word height, H-I-T-E, similar to the word kite, but rather than a K, an H. And when you do a kiai properly, it should compress the center of your body, it should startle your imaginary opponent, and it should also serve to give you a little bit more confidence or intensity in what you're doing. So when we kiai in this kata, the first one is done on the back fist strike. Elbow and the second is done on the shokenski, the, sh the one knuckle punch at the end of the kata. It should be loud, it should be short, and it should be sharp. All you need to do is hang out at the dojo for a little while and you'll hear kiais of different sounds and characteristics. Everyone has their own kiai. They should be unique to you. The goal is not to impersonate another person's kiai, but use its its intensity and nature to kind of inspire you to dig in and find and discover your own kiai. Everyone should be unique and like any technique in karate do, it takes time to develop it and really um, cultivate it to make it real so that it serves you and isn't just window dressing.